Welcome back everyone to Seed Story Cup 4. We're on to the uh, another match with, I think Stensifka is going to be playing up against uh, Firebat. Firebat. So it's going to be kind of an interesting match because these two guys are really good players. Um, the Midget and the, the Giant will be accompanying you on this trip. Myself, Noxious, and Nimsh, uh, who actually, we were playing Overwatch a lot and we pretty much discovered that the we, work, we work okay. Perfect composition, right? Right. Not the perfect comp, but we work it, well together. Oh, come on, it's perfect. Like, right. We haven't dropped right. a game. Right, you're right. A Winston right. and Mercy. We're but, good. But uh, coming back to Hearthstone, there's like yep. Sif Sifka versus Firebat. The, the big question is, why? The why what? Why, why are they playing an elimin elimination match? Because Ten Sifka was sportsmanship by guess oriented enough to give Wreckful a chance for a rematch. I mean, that's very Ten esque though, because he's, very, he's a very nice guy. Uh, probably one of the most zen people who play this game by a long shot. Yeah. Um, and he didn't lose to Rekfo. That's why Rekfo right. already advanced. And uh, now Stanislav Sivka has to play versus Firebat in the elimination match. And then the winner of that will play versus R RDU in yeah. the elimination match as well. Yeah, and RDU seemed a little bit stressed. I crossed him on the way here. He seemed uh, pretty stressed out. So we're going to be opening up with what looks like to be a Freeze Mage versus Secret Paladin. Usually, uh, the Freeze Mage has a pretty good chance. A very good one. Yeah, it's uh, a good matchup for the Freeze Mage unless Paladin is running something in Kazan Mystic. They can uh, play in a very specific moment, but most of yeah. the people, they don't run it. And the bans, uh, we see the rogue being banned for for Firebat and yeah, Warrior it, for Stanislav. Yeah, Warrior for uh, Stanislav. I'm guessing the with, when you've got Freeze Mage as Firebat, you want to dodge the Warrior. When you've got Druid, when the matchup isn't as polarized as it used to be, um, it, it's kind of tough to get those wins with two of your decks. And the Control Warrior versus Control Warrior, or at least the Warrior Mirror match, um, will tend to go to the Control one. And Stanislav is definitely more a Control player for sure. Absolutely. So it seems like Firebat already got that good matchup in the very beginning. And uh, let's see the hand. So what do you think about Firebat's hand for now? I mean, Firebat's hand, I think, is kind of slow. -ish, but he's got the, the, the card draw that he needs to get to, to the removal. What's interesting, though, is Tensif, because like, he could play the double secret just to kill the Acolyte and deny the draw uh, from the Mage, which usually that's kind of what you need to do, if only because the way the Mage beats you is by getting to the removal, and you can always hope that they don't have a good hand. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense yeah. to just have the uh, big Secret Keeper and deny the Acolyte. But then, like, Farbad is just cycling those Acolytes for cards. He has a lot of card draw. He has the Arcane Intellect, a Loot Quarter. And as Bar is also pretty good because it will extend the game. It's basically 8 health for free mana. Yeah, it's a bit tricky, though, if you're in, uh, in Stan Sivka's position. Because you're feeding, like, sure, you're not feeding him too many cards because he's not pinging the Acolyte. I mean, you're still giving him a card draw which means you're not dealing damage, which means you're slowing your pace down while his keeps increasing because he's getting to turn four, barely took it any damage. Um, and unless you pick up something absolutely crazy, this might just be, you know, it might just mean that the mage gets to do whatever he wants. Yeah, but on the other hand, he doesn't have much choice. He needs to yeah. deny the card draw and just go all in here. Um, turn four is not very big for mage, so you will not expect uh, much AoE. There is Con of Cold, though. Is this the turn to, to Con of Cold? Probably not yet. It might be okay. The thing is, Muster for Battle gets countered pretty hard by Cone of Cold on its own. And, uh, I mean, there might be an argument for something as boring as just Arcane electing and taking a bunch of damage if you think you're going to get a board sweep. Because you can Cone of Cold to stall, maybe find a Nova, and then get a Blizzard. Uh, but maybe it's too risky, I don't know. It's, uh... Yeah, if you could Frostbolt and then ping whatever comes back with Redemption, that's also an option. Yeah, it's, it's not bad as well. As long as you dodge Avenge. And that second secret is not Avenge. We've seen, we've seen it. What was it? It's Noble Sacrifice. Noble Sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. So Firebat just checked for it, and it turned out well. No really big uh, way to play around it for Stan Sivka. Oh man. Well, he did deal some substantial damage, and if there's no Blizzard beyond the Cone of Cold, no Frost Nova, somehow, like if everything is at the very bottom, the Paladin can absolutely roll over uh, Firebat. Yeah, it happens, because in Hearthstone, yeah. nothing is 100%. Like, even though it's a good matchup <laughs> right. for, for Freeze Mage, Paladin can just, just play minions, go full face, and that's it. Nothing is 100% besides the composition of the latter metagame and Secret Paladin being there, right? It's like yeah, yeah. Literally, just... Paladin is uh, probably the strongest class right now. It's funny to say, because I remember back when uh, you know we were in beta, it was essentially the weirdest class to play. Like, I had control, and that was it. Like You almost couldn't play anything. It was so bad. Oh. Like, even before Mistress Challenger, Paladin was yeah. one of the unpopular classes. It was popular after the GVG release. Yeah, I mean, GVG pretty much gave Paladin viability on its own. Uh, you could play mid-range and actually make it work. 
Now, Stasovka's agonizing over this. He's thinking, what's the benefit of playing Belcher over uh, Shredder here? I mean, so it fills up your curve nicely, but it's less likely to give you a power drop if it dies, right? Yeah, like, the, the turn 5 normally versus Freeze Mage is Frost Nova and Doomsayer. That's why he opted to go uh, with Pilot and Shredder in case that happens. Yeah, it's a bit more power. Like, what's left over after that play is a lot more powerful than... Um, <laughs> Buffy, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Mistakes were made. I mean, do you have the choice though? It does mitigate the damage you're looking for. Oh wow! That if it lands anywhere but on the mini bot, that could be a really big deal. Yeah, the firebat really needs the frost nova. He wants it on the secret keeper, I think, because um, the shredder is already protected by its own death rattle. Because secret keeper is getting buffed by the opposing secrets as well. <laughs> it's nerfing <laughs> right. the barriers, right? That's amazing. Now I have to wonder, like, do you ever, if you're firebat next turn, go for something like blood mage down those cone of cold? I mean, you don't have flame strike, you don't have blizzard, but like, is it fine to stall right away? Oh, all right, that that's still fine. It's like it's got double death rattle. Like the first shredder spawns another shredder, and then the other shredder spawns a two drop. That's kind of how it feels. Yeah, it's basically very good for Stasivka. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Such a good matchup. Oh, there is the Doomsayer. Cone of Cold with Doomsayer looks really solid. Yeah, it looks... It, it's great, actually. This is the best. Yeah, but never mind the Divine Shields. They're not going to do anything. Equality top deck. Uh, I mean, it's half good. Silence, maybe? I don't know if he's playing an owl, but... Oh, wow, oh that's my so, god! That's the exactly... Deck. What? <laughs> that's so perfect! Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Con of cold! And Sifko! This has been a very interesting day. Yeah, a lot of things happened. Oh my god! That pleb minion became a king. <laughs> just like that. Oh no! And this is how uh, royalty was born. Some random guy stumbled upon a crown and he kicked somebody really hard. Well, I don't know what to say here. This is a... Uh, uh, this is a really tough spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking really grim. Firebat could go for Ice Block, Arcane, Intellect. I feel like this is his best chance. Luxus, is it like uh, Doomsayer Boys? <laughs> Do you go like... No, not quite, not fi quite, yeah. Fireball, Fireball Shredder? <laughs> yeah. Get Doomsayer? I feel like the Arcane Intellect could give you like the AoE that justifies playing Ice Block. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, what right. am I off though? Ice Block, the problem uh, with that play... Um, is that you really don't get... Yeah, you won't survive the turn. So you'd have to Ice Block and maybe Ice Land something to guarantee that you don't get bot. Can you so, just Fireball the 5-5 five five here? How much damage is there left? 10, 11? Yeah, there's, he's one off lethal. Uh, like a Consecration would do it. A Knife Juggler tr like spawn something would do it. So if you could do anything here, it would probably be something like Ice Block and, and Ice Lands to freeze like the biggest minion. Yeah. And then next turn you go for the AoE. Um, yeah, that way you don't get bot. But Iceland's into 5-5. Five five. Or 5-3. Five, 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 or five yeah, because it's going to grow, right? In our secret. Oh, no. This is awful. So he's just popping the button this turn easily. Oh, I can't believe this. This is ridiculous. He actually got that one damage. If Fireball would go for, go for the risk, he would be dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, he found the, he found the one damage, but... Um, well, right now it's just like popping the block. Right, it would, which actually, like, if Sensivka pops it at uh, exactly one, which he can, then the Frost Nova Doomsayer doesn't really help Fireball. He's going to have to use the Ice Lance on the face to deny the weapon. So he's going to Ice Lance face, Frost Nova Doomsayer, cl like, clutter the board. But there's Shredder then. Uh, no, no, but it, uh, yeah, you'll be dead on the following turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can, yeah, okay. So Doomsayer, Frost Nova, Ice Lance face, that's five, six mana, he will have two mana open. Yeah. He'll have uh, mana to ping face, I guess. But he's playing to survive now, not playing to win. But all it takes for Freeze Mage sometimes is exactly that. Like one turn where surviving, like if you can somehow curve into like a heal bot and maybe... Alex Straza maybe possibly. That would be turn nine where he actually can play Come something. Yeah, comes back. Um, Alex Straza is a good, good idea, yeah. But then something like Consecration will kill him. Yeah. Uh, the juggler, juggler with a, a spawn. Not anymore though. I mean, if the board doesn't get cleared, the juggler can't be played, but if the board doesn't get cleared, he loses. Okay, so far about going for ice. Oh, man. Here we go. Ice lands that face. A Secret Keeper grew Undertaker levels of strength, I think. It's, um... It sometimes feels like that. Yeah, it really happens. Not often, but, but if uh, opponent heals you... All right, that does nothing. So, you... Probably just past the turn. Yeah, I guess. 
You could blessing of kings the opponent's doomsayer for BM. <laughs> Just like, yeah, I'm gonna win this. Bad scientist. I mean, do you play the Belcher to get an extra one attack minion? Because the mage is on one, so that would give you an extra out. Yeah, that's like, an extra minion. And right. uh, so what's going to uh, happen on board, it, there is going to be a secret after this. Right. Okay. Have he used double ice barrier? He used one ice barrier thing. One ice, one barrier, ice barrier, one, one ice block. Barrier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Mad Scientist is either providing him with extra eight health or one more turn. If it's extra eight health, you'll have a minion from Shredder and you will have a 1-2. So it kind of makes sense, because maybe with that, you'll be able to actually just win the game right there. Yeah. What if it's uh, like a stealth minion? Stealth minion like a Gilded? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's actually really solid, because it's got high enough health that it won't die to Frostbolt, if you if you assume it's going to be coming out, so you're happy about that. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter, but it absolutely could have. What is that secret, though? We have to know that much. It's very important to figure it out. That's an ice barrier. barrier. All right, so Consecration would be the only out, or Juggler, of course. Yeah, Ice Barrier is really nice here. Wow, that's really tricky. You might actually play both uh, draw minions as well, both with Border and yeah, Bones. I think you're right. And ping the one, too? Uh, you can't, because can. if you play both minions, you don't have oh, yeah, mana left over. Mana. But. All right, so Juggler wouldn't even work 100% of the time, would it? Yeah, it would. Never mind. I like. Yeah, Juggler works. Yeah. Juggler, Consecration. Um, and that's a rapid. Oh, that's that's not bad. It's all right because if Alexstrasza comes out, you can deal with it. If uh, anything, Antonidas. Right. You know, casually. And but, how, how much damage does he have right now? Six, eight. So he's wait. Is he one off? That's justice for top decking the Blessing of Kings <laughs> earlier. Not all kings can actually pop the ice blocks and the ice barriers. Actually, Juggler was good because he could like go without attacking, but he whatever damage, he just needed one damage, right? This he needs one damage to pop everything and win. Um, but the Juggler was the easiest part. Yeah. yeah. Like, just a champion would have done it. All right, he needs to attack because he needs to check for the block. If that's ice block, you want to pop it right now. Oh, man. There's a chance that Firebat comes back, depending on what he draws, because he's got three draws, including the two minions on the board. So there's definitely a chance that Firebat's able to get himself um, a heal bot, which would absolutely stall this game. And he has the Nova. He has Nova Antonidas. That's great on its own. Yeah, I mean, you still have to survive, because in this case, he's still going down pretty low. Um, like, he's going to be on two health, which means a 1 1 won't kill him. But anything bigger probably would threaten him enough. All right. All right, so Stan managed to do everything. He attacked with the weapon before. That's why he can't attack now. And then there's the Pyroblast, so it's... Uh, Not quite the card you're looking for, but... You might, you might actually go for... So here's the deal. If you find, like, an AoE, if there's Redemption, it has to be, like, a cheap AoE. Right? So you have to find Blizzard. Probably more than Flame Strike. It's easier to weave in, and you can ping whatever it comes back. Um, he'll check for Noble Sag, that's for sure. He'll know that right away. Is he looking for Alex Straza now? Noble Sag, and uh, that's Avenge as well, so he will know everything about the secrets. Med Scientist is interesting. It, it, it gives you the Ice Block if you kill it. So getting it out with the Frost Nova guarantees that you might be safe if you get it to trade. Oh, this uh, weapon does perfect. actually not Avenge. Um, yeah, yeah. If, so playing Antonidas would make it do go down to one. It it does force Tensivka to use the weapon to kill it though. Yeah. Um, instead of going for face. Right. But then again, Tensivka might opt for face just because he knows next turn he wins, uh, assuming he can live. Which, based on the amount of health he's got, the win would actually be realistic. Um, but killing Antonidas is too much of a Precaution. Especially because thing. Firebat only has four cards. And yeah. Stansivka, I've seen a lot of things. Like Con of Cold, Frost Nova, Double Doomsayer, I believe. And uh, also he's seen one double Ice Barrier, one Ice Block. So he's in a great shape. Hey, ch uh, did, did you realize that uh, chat can count? They're at uh, 165 right now. Wow. They ca Yeah, 166. My regards to chat, though. 167. You guys are great. Ah, uh, no, they doubled on the 167, guys. You messed up. 169, man. You done goofed. That's a sexy number there. Yeah, they tried to go to 420, but not happening. Um, okay, so Mad Scientist and Frostbolt, your own guy. Absolutely the play, I think. Force and play. Well, I mean, what else, right? Um, well, yeah, that will buy you one more turn, and that's basically it, right? And you thin your deck for Alex. It's one extra card you might find. Um, 
can use the window. Like something like flame strike. You still get fucked. Yeah. You still get fucked. So it has to be. Poor fire about this freeze mage is not working for him. And it's funny because we're talking about how, like how polarized a matchup it's supposed to be. Yeah, and it's absolutely yeah, the opposite. Doesn't work. I think Farbat should have went for like Winston Mercy combo Noxious. Yeah, that, that's really easy because you just put up shields, Mercy stands in them. Yeah, just heal. Yeah. And then that Widowmaker on the enemy team just like shoots walls. Yeah, Stan Sivka is just shooting him absolutely. He went inside uh, the poison bomb as well. Yeah. Playing very well, getting sniped by Symmetra turrets. All right, so Farbat has no more lifeline. That's it. I think the best play that Farbat can do here is Farbat's his own face. I mean, it sends a message. The problem is it gives information to Stan about the fact that there's a Pyro Blast. I'm not sure if Stan knows that yet. He will not be able to use the Freeze Mage though. Like, Freeze Mage is just getting killed here. It's out, yeah. That's gone. Man. Oh my god. And that's, uh, that's so sad, Noxious. That's so sad. Well, I mean, it happens. Secret Paladin's a deck that does that. The thing is that now Firebat has to beat Secret Paladin with Warrior and Druid, which he doesn't want to do. Like, Which he, Druid does he have? He has normal Druid, right? This is not Aggro Druid. Right. Well, Aggro Druid would technically be, you know, I, I able, even, about even, I'd say, perhaps a little bit favored depending on how the, the game plays out. Well, actually, Druid can also, like, it, it can sometimes win versus everything. Just curve out, uh, play a fellow Reaver and people can't counter it. But, yeah. like, normal Druid is, is it, like, even right now or favored for Paladin? I think the Paladin's got an edge. It's kind of the same thing as Warrior, um, where you're, like, Warrior is unable to remove the minions, like the Divine Shields and the One Ones. Uh, Druid can kill the One Ones, but it's taking him a lot of tempo away. Yeah. While Paladin doesn't really lose that much. So, it, a swipe is very instrumental to getting it done. It might be a standard case where if Paladin curves out, there is nothing the Druid can do. Yeah. But if Druid can actually get good wild growth and and put into play the bigger threats yeah. before Paladin can play his normal threats on the specific yeah. turns. But that's a crazy that's a crazy hand for Firebat though. Like getting the two one ones out it's before really Paladin plays anything is absolutely sick. One one can pop the shield when there's um, a shield of minion bots. Yeah exactly and you can kill it with your hero. Um, but in this case, you know, Stansevka's got the Secret Keeper start again, and he's able to play the Noble Sacrifice if he wants, uh, which means that he's going to be able to protect the Secret Keeper, make it a 2-3, and it forces Firebat to have uh, a Wrath. The question is, because of Wrath, just because of that one card, is it worth using up your coin this early? Because you have no follow-up. That's a very good question, Nox. Uh, you know, you, he has Shredder, and he has Mr. Challenger as well. I so mean, if he if he just goes here with the with the secret keeper, then yeah, I probably would yeah, would do that as well. I kind of like that. That's really cool. It's too yellow, I think. You, you just can't go there. Too yellow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, no. I mean, like secret keeper. Just going secret keeper, coin double secret the first turn. Right. Is, or like secret keeper and one secret is too much. I like this more. Yeah, but that's gonna like that's gonna really put. Uh, Stansivka on the back foot, because this start is as good as it's going to get. I mean, you're curving into the Savage Combatant. You got two one ones to trigger any secrets that may come out. Uh, and in this case, Secret Keeper might not do as much work as you're hoping for if you're Stansivka. But then you do have the Shredder on turn three, which right. might is your comeback. Mechanism. Yeah, I mean, he's hoping so. We know that there's a Savage Combatant, so it might not happen unless True Silver Champion is picked up. Yeah, this is a great spot for... Well, it's a great, great spot for combatants, but do you really want to play it? I, I guess you do. Would you play juggler instead? What do you gain from it? I mean, if you play combatant, you're accelerating your mana. You're using up that temporary mana crystal. Uh, I think combatant's best case here is that it's a great target for secret keepers to actually attack into. Like, Paladin cannot get, have this combatant alive. Right, he's going to trade everything he can into it, for sure. But now Firebat has to be thinking, if it's Noble Sack and Avenge, I if, like the, if the first minion was Avenge, and the, the second, first secret was Avenge, and the second exactly. one is Noble Sack... I really like not attacking here at all. I'm in trouble. Uh-oh. Well, you may like that, but that's still a really big Secret Keeper. Yeah, the Secret Keeper is quite good, but I think you do... Do you coin the Belch, the, the Shredder here? I feel like killing that 2-3, I wouldn't say it's a priority, but it's got to be pretty close. So, alternatively, you could go for something like King's... Um, I mean, it does make it, it. It leaves you really vulnerable to keeper, but you're you are removing the mana crystal. So the only thing that backfires is keeper of the grove. And if it had been there, would Firebat have played it last turn instead of Savage Combatant? Maybe you just go for face because he didn't attack. Maybe you just want to bait him. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. That mana crystal, like the five drops on Druid can be really dangerous. It's like six damage. Which I you know. wasted on a, on a like. Know. But Keeper of the Grove, cow. man. Well, then again, he probably doesn't expect it to come out, so. Yeah, as you said, the like, Keeper would come like last turn, right? I mean, he, you're right. Maybe going face is a proper play. Um, but there's a lot of. There's a lot of danger just from having uh, like either removal from the Savage Combatant or the extra mana crystal from uh, the Aspirant. So picking one of those two targets, I think, is correct. What do you think, by the way? Do you like Secret Keeper Paladin or do you like the Zombie Chop Paladin more? Honestly, I feel like one of the weaknesses of Paladin is that secrets usually clog your hand in the worst possible way. So she's there to fix you up. Like, she'll fix your, your deck uh, just by virtue of the way it operates. But... The zombie chow sometimes feels a lot more consistent for weird reasons. Um, just because even when you're like if you're playing against a metagame with hunters and tempo mage, sometimes you can get a lot more mileage out of it. Even if you play a, like a mirror match. Right. Yeah, like you, you're able to kill the, the mini boss automatically without worrying. You can argue that Secret Keeper is good in mirror as well because it locks your opponent's secrets. But then if you don't draw the secrets and you originally don't want to draw them. Yeah. All right, well, that's a good turn for Firebat because he's getting to trade everything away. The Shredder doesn't contest Lothab nearly as well as uh, Extensive Gun might want to, and Firebat just finds the top deck of yeah. his dreams just before Repentance. That's a really juicy 8-8 for 5 mana. Oh, my God. Fail balanced. There's a lot of secrets, man. Like you don't. This is this is so terrible. This is the worst case scenario because I think right now there's no more uh, noble sacks in the deck, it's which so means bad. the whole shenanigan with Mister Challenger is not automatic. This is like the all the secrets that he got. Yeah. Yeah, because the, he had noble sack redemption before, so now it's like second. He might have an, an avenge or double avenge, maybe. He's got avenge and probably um, uh, competitive spirit, perhaps. Or just double avenge, and that's know. it. So Mystery Challenger comes down on 6 and it brings one secret. Right. I mean, he did mill 9 cards if he plays a Redemption, but, like, let's be honest, it's... Uh... Well, Redemption is uh, a question now, because you might want to play it, but then you can't play the dude. Or you can play the dude, and you let Firebat figure it out. Actually, when you play Redemption, there's Noble Sacrifice as well already played. So uh, you'll get back a 2-1, right? Yeah, yeah. Unless uh, somebody snipes them with jugglers. I still, I still think you just go all in on secrets with a hand like this. Uh, like, you can't even afford to not put down something, whatever it is. All right, Anoyotron. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Grunts? Is there anything better? Doomsayer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's kind of... That's yeah, not right. bad, that's not bad. Uh, you know, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure it's going to win a game, but he looks pretty angry, so I guess I'd be scared. You know what, Noxious? Child actually, Child actually got to 420. No, they're, they're not. They're, <laughs> they're pretending. They're pretending. 420, Kappa. They can't count. Chat can't count to 1,000. I know that much. All right, man. So, this is... It seems like a hero power. Because he wants to get the Noble Sack out of the way. And if you... What are you thinking? Like, okay, Noble Sacrifice, Avenge... Maybe competitive spirit, maybe redemption. Yeah, the worst case scenario is like the whole trinity of Avenge, Redemption, Noble Sack. But that's like the exact scenario you want to dodge. But with a board like this, does it even bother you? Like Probably it's, it's no, kind really. of exactly like it's kind of hard to be to feel bothered by something like this when you're getting you know uh, 13 damage in just from these two minions. He's staying around, around Repentance as well, which is pretty nice. Yeah, very small minion and it buffs itself over time. And Repentance hits the shadow uh, Shade, so... Yeah. Oh man, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, and that's an extra lethal setting up unless removal is found. Because right now there's no way for Stansev to clear the board up. He has to find... I mean, he, he is going to heal up from the... Um, the Vitality Totem. It's just going to get one secret of it. Well, that's pretty good, right? Do you, do you really want to use it to, like, heal the Fell Reaver? What's your, what's your option? Don't use it and die? I mean, you are still dying, but the Vitality Totem will heal you out of range of Shade and um, the Lothab, right? You go up to 16, then down to 8, then you go back up 4 health? Is I think... It? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're 12. So you're still alive, right? You're on 8. I think this is the most pitiful secret, keep, uh, like, Mistress Challenger I've seen in ages. He's useless. Literally useless. You can bring Avenge and that's it. Yeah. I've got many secrets. Oh, wait. I don't. Well, that's one of the things that Paladin can actually join to, right? Like, a lot of people tend to cut the number of secrets or even bring just a standard 
mid-range Paladin with uh, the Murloc Knight instead of Mistress. Charger. Yeah, Murloc Knight is kind of an interesting card to play in that deck, just because a lot of the time, um, like it's a six drop, yeah, for the most part. But there are times a secret value where you curve out so well that it becomes like a four drop with the potential blowout of win five. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the like when you go into top deck war, you can also use Murloc Knight late game to generate the board. Yeah. See, Stensifka did make the correct play, but he's still going to die to either Swipe, Savage Roar, Drill the Claw, Force of Nature. He knows so there's like damage. a ton of outs in Firebat's deck, and he's going to lose the game um, for a matchup that I thought was probably going to be uh, like uh, easy to handle from a Druid's perspective. The fact that you're playing the Fell Reaver aggro Druid means that the Paladin has no way to deal with the 8-8 the at all. Yeah, this Paladin. I think this Paladin is unfavored. Like, if you have a more mid rangey Paladin with Maybe one big hunter, yeah, or just uh, you know more more belchers. Aldor, Aldor, you know, yeah. Aldor peacekeeper on the eight eight. And you Absolutely, he just milled three cards, and then he has the one eight. He can't do it. Like yeah. he can't get rid of it. Did you notice the amount of uh, potassium in the banana that Stansevka was uh, consuming? He is consuming a banana right now. Yeah, well, he was a second ago. By the way, I just dark bane. That's a card that you don't always see in Tempo Mage, but it works pretty well with Clockwork Gnome spare parts. Um, it, it's it's kind of an added Flame Waker, right, yeah. in that deck. You play it with the Clockwork Gnome variant, and it makes your turn three drops even more abusable when it comes to spells. I think it's really cool. Uh, the fact about it is that when you hit a minion and you kill a minion, it's great. Yeah. If you don't, if you hit face, it's fine, because you want to hit face as well. Like, you're the right. Tempo deck. You just want to kill your opponent as fast as possible. So there are no there are no bad outcomes. Yeah, well, I mean, this hand from Stan Sivka is absolutely nuts, though. Oh my God, it's Whoa. getting crazier by the second. Whoa, this is really good. That's that's impressive. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, Farbot doesn't have that great of a hand. I mean, he had a good start with Leper Gnome. until Mana Worm. Until Mana Worm, and yeah. there's double Savage Roll, which is just gonna sit there unless he uses one as removal. So one of the questions I have is, like, if you're in this position and you're uh, like your Firebat, do you play Juggler and simply go face and let the Mana Worm deal with the board? Like, just hope he doesn't have Frost Bolt. I, f I think you do. If you if you just shape shift and kill the Mana Worm, that's so many resources you're spending here. So you want to to press, you want to deal damage. And there is a chance that there is no Frost Bolt. And if he doesn't have a Frost Bolt, he can he cannot contest one of them, right? Like right. if he uses the ping, he can only contest one. Okay, now the like, oh, this is kind of a tricky turn. Um, I mean, the unstable portal is likely going to give you something you can use. If, like, assuming you go for a source of apprentice coin on stable portal, as like it's kind of the obvious play. The extra attack on the mana worm has to either be you know dealt with with a juggler snipe, or it ha like you could go for the ping play right with the clockwork ping. Yeah, yeah. That means your turn four could be double sorcerers, double portal, or turn three sorcerers portal. So you're curving, you know, a little bit more reliably. And in order to deal with the board, the Druid has to use the hero power and surrender tempo. Yeah, that's why I think it's good. Uh, but uh, it blocks turn free play from Firebat, but Stan Sivka didn't know that there is no turn free play. Now, now there is a living bone, which is, uh, well, living roots, which is great. It's the best he could get, I think. Yeah, uh, like you wanted to use the hero power anyway. Yeah. So the roots come down, and then we're going to see Sorceress and one of the portals. The extra health is actually really sweet because the 3-3 three doesn't die to Keeper. So you might consider going for the Sorcerer's Portal, see what comes out, then try out the armor plating. If you get Ida's Dark Bane or Flame Waker from the portal, you win. It is consistent with the previous uh, play as well because yeah. you do force Druid to use the hero power, so you want to block the, the play. Oh man, he's going to go for the turn 4 craziness. Oh my god. Top of portal. Oh my god. Abusing the ramp. And he's going to curve really nicely. I think the idea is to you know, put pressure on 4 and then follow it up with more pressure on 5. And because you're doing two portals, you have twice the chances of getting the, like, an insane outcome. Yeah, I'm really curious what he's going to get. If he gets free, like, free drops are the best, right? Because you can play them on board. Right. Um, what, like, what would you want? Uh, that's not, let's say it's not a 3 drop. That you could play right now, like 1 and 2. Anoyatron. Dancing Sword is a 4-4, four, four, so that's, yeah, that's a definitely job, solid. Which is good. And... And the second portal is bringing... Of course it's going to be Minibot or something. Unless he actually wants to keep it for the Flame Waker. Yeah, he's considering it, because he thinks he's going to get to keep uh, one of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. 
Uh, he's vulnerable to swipe, I guess. I mean, at this point, if he plays the Dancing Swords and swipe hits, he loses, uh, like, everything he's got. Unless he smartly but buffs. But one then, of them, yeah. But then you might probably keep the spare part for the Flame Waker as well. Yeah, it's always a debate of what you do with those, play, those uh, spare parts. But in order to keep this board healthy, I feel like laying your, your spells right now might be a good option. Because otherwise, that, that's a turn 6 play, right? Like, Drake on 5 and then turn 6, Flame Waker Portal, armor plating, even if you don't have any more apprentices. I think it's absolutely fine to keep the portal. Like, on, on 5, he will have exactly the mana to play those cards, even if both apprentices are gone. All right, so... Yeah, this Bell is... Reaver is a pretty good card. This is interesting. But it's a weird spot. So what do you want to really do? Like, you want to deal with... With Double Roar, I almost want to just... I mean, if you hit face for four, I don't know five, if there's much, much spots. Yeah. If it's a spot to roar here. F Fell Reaver is always good, though. Like, that's the thing. You want to get it out of your deck as soon as possible. But the then you know, that, you know there's a spare part, at least. Yeah. I think Fell Reaver is... Like, Firebat usually says that Fell Reaver is always good when you play it. But because those two apprentices threaten you a lot, roar is appealing. May not be good, but it's appealing. Well, you can just... Shade Hero Power also trades. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was thinking oh, Shade no. Hero Power to develop the board. And you've seen a lot of spells. Have you seen a lot of spells? You've seen the coin already, you've seen one portal. There's Frostballs, there's Fireballs, there's probably not much else. Arcane Missiles maybe in that version. Yeah, the big Mirror version. Image. But yeah, yes. he's gonna go for like the early double roar lethal. I think it's a good play. Like, you know, if you go with the clears, you will have one apprentice left. And, oh then, my God. and then some spells can actually kill the shade. This is like the deck for Firebat is literally gone. Yes. Like this, this deck is now non-existent. This is over. Oh my God! This deck is absolutely resting in peace. <laughs> can he even like? He no, might. He... Yeah, I was gonna say, can he ping his like his <laughs> clockwork? Yeah, exactly. To get another player player spare part. <laughs> He's one of my off. Right. That. I had the exact same thought. Um, and the thing is that this torn warrior is really annoying. It sounds like nothing, but it's going to stop the fell reaver. It's just one extra little bonus to it. Like, assuming, of course, that the uh, spare part ends up doing its job, which it did not, but you can always trade into the 2 1 if you want to. He can still ping as well. Yeah. All right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, that turn was pretty good. That's, uh. I mean, what do you do? Uh, Shredder? I mean,. Okay, wait. Do well, you do you shredder or do you shade? Uh, you can savage roar and deal with the two free, and then go ten to face and ten shade, and shade will be good for the second savage roar next turn. Uh, if you savage roar though, you can't kill the two three, right? You have to hero power, which means you don't have. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The extra right, mana. Right, right, right. So you'd absolutely have to go for. I mean, shade hero power doesn't really solve it. Shade savage like because you'd have to trade the fell reaver into the torn warrior. But technically, it does mean that Dr. Boom with the other roar is likely going to stick around at some point. So you'd have to dodge fireballs, basically. Maybe you want to keep double roar after yeah. Dr. Boom. So this turn, just kill the 2 free, play Shredder, Shapeshift. And, and hero uh, attack phase for a little bit. Like He's just considering fatigue. He's like, yeah, what if, what if things go worse? Um, like, can it go worse? Well, you've seen a lot of cards being played But you already. could Savage Roar Hero Power and just kill the Flame Waker. That's absolutely correct. Or, as you said, go full face. Um, it's not about planning your end game. If he feels that there is only two cards and Flame Waker is still threatening... Because the thing is, he is curving into Boom next turn. So no matter what here, Stan Sefka is going to be scrambling for an answer to this. Yeah, and there is that, not that much damage here. There's A damage and he has a 21 still. Uh-oh. All right, so... Azurek is great for Stan Sifka. Oh my god! Arcane Intellect this for one is mana. Brutal! His deck is gone. He could get Frostbolt off the top, freeze the Fell Reaver, <laughs> deny Firebat the ability to get any kind of lethal. Oh Arcan my misses. god! <laughs> Unbelievable! Oh wow. Nothing even more cards. He is out of cards on turn six against a Tempo Mage. And Fell Reaver is dead. Fell Reaver is just time. gone. This game is over. Not quite. I don't think he's dead yet. Well, Wait. he's not. He's taking two next turn. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, he's dead. Uh, he could shred our hero power. I don't think that solves the problem. Shade doesn't either. Dr. Boom kills you on the spot. Um, that's it. Firebat goes away and Sense of Go will take the win. That was such oh, a sick game. I loved goodness. it.
on the back of Aedes Darkbane Mulligans. Right. <laughs> One of the... This is absolutely... Uh, like, I expected the Druid to be able to put up a better fight, but the way Stensivka held the two apprentices for that crazy turn, and then he held the portal... That's a really smart decision. Part. Instead yeah. of just going uh, with everything, just uh, unleashing the portals, yeah. he actually kept them for the Flame Waker and had a really good turn. And the Azure Drake as well was, was useful, useful. Right. I mean, I feel like the, um, the Torn Warrior also put a dent in Firebat's ability to do yeah. much because he had to surrender some damage. Yeah, just well, to... he had to even like shapeshift. So instead right. of playing Shade on board and maybe like something else, he just had to Savage or which didn't put him anywhere. Yeah, he was hoping that on the following turn after Boom, he would have cards left that he might not lose to. Uh, but I, he was counting his cards before the turn, so he figured I'm probably not going to have much to play. So in the end, both portal cards were actually the free drops, which yeah. is amazing. Free cards, best stats. Doesn't get better tempo-wise. All right, so we're going to see a uh, patron warrior, or a, is it control or patron? Can't tell yet. With Acolyte of Pain? Everything is kind of both. Sure. Oh my goodness. That's a pretty good card. It turns out Especially that... Especially uh, versus Warrior. And it gives you a curve, right? You go from Spell Slinger to Trogzor. You even give him a spell. You it's can't like, execute, hey. you can't Shield Slam, you can't Shield Block, Shield Slam, you, like, you can't do. There's yeah. always a Trog. And it's first thing where we saw a Trog, it's like, hey, you don't have the spells? Take this spell and right. play it when I have the Trog on board. All right. Fort Lightning. Fort Lightning is useless. Heroic Strike. That kills Armorsmith pretty easily. All right, Fort Lightning might not be useless yet. Honestly, I think uh, because the, the, the coin hasn't been used, right? So there's a chance that what happens here, like if Firebat goes for Coin Desbite to kill a Spell Slinger, the coin is not going to give a Trog. But if he doesn't use the coin now, then it'll be a liability when like Trogs or comes out because he loses a tempo potential from it. Yeah. All right. Well, it's still weird because the drug drop, Chug is being played here. Chug is a 6-6, six, six, right? Right, I mean, you can still go like, Acolyte of Pain, right? If Chug's falls down, you attack with Death's Bite, it's on one health. Um, and then what you can do is... Play a spell and get a free 5 on the board. No, you have to use the, uh, the uh, Acolyte of Pain to kill the Chug's afterwards. So now for Sivka, what do you do? Do you do you go for a Yeti instead? Do you want to bait the Death Spider attack, or do you? Just I don't think so because slam the thing the is, Trogs are all right. Trogs are weak to brawl, even like among other things. So you want to play it as early as you can, and put the warrior in a really clunky spot. Firebat is reading the card. He's like, not like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, can you shield slam it? Yeah, you can. Uh, but the problem is, uh, what happens? More Trogs come out. Yeah, and what, what's the timing though? Like, the Trog comes out when you shield slam, and then the Trog is the Trog buffed as well? Uh, no, I don't think it's buffed. It's not buffed yet, okay. No. Because the, the shield oh slam hits God. first. That would first. be an infinite loop of <laughs> awesome. Yeah, she's gonna 5-5 five five instead. Yeah, this looks to me like Firebat's gonna hope that uh, the Acolyte of Pain can take this out. I mean, I guess there's a good argument to be made for, you know, killing Trogzor and just removing, like, using the Execute, giving him a 3-5. Like, be done with it, and then never look at it again. Can you somehow do it? Well, even if the Acolyte dies, he will have the weapon next turn. So he can do something. But like, if he attacks here... I mean, if he attacks, he draws a card. He can execute. He can attack, execute, give one Trog, and that's it. Yeah. That's not terrible. Yeah, it's all right. And he's not taking damage here. Yeah. It's as good as you're going to get. So you do give him a 3-5, but you deny the possibility of never, ever playing a spell again in your life. That was still a really good turn for Stansivka. Yeah, I mean, uh, Firebat did get two cards guaranteed from the Acolyte, so even though the Trogs was really effective, ultimately, it's not going to be his ending for now. All right, so Stansivka is going for the draw, even with Acolyte to deny even more card draw. There is a big game hunter, which means this is like a full control warrior that we know for now. Yeah, that's a bit clunky for Firebat, because the only way for you to really deal with this effectively um, is to overload yourself, but I don't think that's in your plans. It's like the last thing you want to do right now. So you'd have to play Belcher defensively and hope that the mage just doesn't abuse the tempo you're giving him. I think it's not bad. Like, if you play the Belcher and if mage attacks into the minion, then you have that for gliding for the next turn, maybe. Right. And you do have the weapon as well. You have armor, uh, the shield stamps. I feel like they're cheating. They're up to like two, 627. Somebody has 736. Somebody's skipping hundreds. Chat. 
Chad. Chad is cheating on the numbers. Chad is cheat. Yeah. They got back to 420 Kappa. Yeah, just, just spam that. That's enough. 420 Kappa's all right. Kappa Ross, please. He's doing it. Oh my god. All right, so he's overloading himself. He figures on turn on, the, on turn six, I'll have Fari War Axe armor up, and that's enough for me. Uh, but he hopes to death there isn't something too big for the War Axe to deal with. But Sansivka has full hand, and he just used uh, Shield Sun for a great removal card yeah. later. He does, yeah, he does have those vouchers, though, so maybe. Fireball, great card versus those vouchers uh, later in the game, but how to develop the board? Yeti, I think, is the best, yeah. Oh man. Just play your minions. <laughs> they listened. What have I done? All right, Bash is a great card. Uh, but unfortunately, right now, with the overload you're, you're undergoing, it's not amazing. It, you do get a good target for the, the War Axe, at least. So you, it's not a completely dead turn. And you do get to abuse the, the advantage that War Axe is supposed to give you. I'm just not sure going forward that Firebat will be able to stop the bleeding. Because there's a lot of, like, this card draw. So more options. There's a minion on the board that's strong enough to kill a Belcher if it just gets, you know, an additional ping on it. You have spare parts that the Archmage can buff. So we know for a fact that Stansif Cup probably can get away with this. Uh, what uh, do you mean, like, slamming Antonidas right now? No, no, no. Oh, no. Yeah, That'd about be too risky. Right? But think about it. Double Shield Slam already used. One Execute already used. So it would be Cruel Taskmaster with BGH or... And you have so much Burst as well, because you have Heroic... How, how is the card even called? Heroic Strike. Heroic Strike, which is four damage. Well, I he love did it. it. Oh, man. I love it. Nims with the calls. Oh, you know what? I think the way you explained it, though, makes a lot of sense because you've seen most of the removal, but he's got exactly what he needs. Exactly. Oh, a revenge. Can't say I've seen much of that. That's, that's still a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage, but it's not going to give you the infinite fireball engine you were looking for. And if the warrior stabilizes past this point, that's where you lose the game. But look at the amount of damage. He's got Fireball, Frostball, Heroic Strike. That's 13 damage, 17 total. So he's like three, off, like five off lethal right now. Um, he's just going to need to find a little bit more. And I think with the Arcane Little X, that's pretty easy. He actually have, has like the switch as well, so he can make Yeti a 5-4. Yeah, if he wants to get Ar a tiny bit more damage. The, the missiles themselves. Oh, he found a second Yeti. That's pretty wait, good. Wait, wait, wait. Just, just think about that. <laughs> you kill a Belcher with that Yeti flipped. Yes, you do. That, you, is, that you, is really cool. And then you can kill the one two with the missiles, or like just the flame cannon. I think flame cannon for the Belcher would be actually better. So flame cannon ping, and then... Oh man, Firebat's like... I, I think there's damage in that hand. He played Archmage on an empty board. How much, be spells. how much is it? So, four mana to kill the Shield Maiden? Uh, yeah. Or do you even kill the Shield Maiden? I, I, that's we, what I'm thinking about, right? Like, does it matter? Um, can he buff her? He can swap the stats, I guess. I mean, you could go, uh, yeah, you could go edit the Dark Bane, swap the stats, uh, swap the stats, and then if it hits the uh, Shield Maiden, Arcane Missiles is very likely to, to get done. I think I like the Flame Cannon. Ping? Ping, yeah. Sure. He's going to draw first. Sorry, right, so he's thinking of extending the game a little beyond this turn, obviously. Oh, man, that's so much damage there. Well, if that's not an incentive to go face, I don't know what is. I think I would even throw the... Um, the Frostbolt to face. I think that makes a lot of sense since you're denying weapon use. But, I mean, you don't have to, technically. You, you don't have to, but you just have so much damage for the next turn. Firebat's like, what is this game? <laughs> what, is happen what happened to me? There was a Trogzor. I've been killed by the Yetis. It's yeah. such, such irony because Firebat won the World Championships on the back of the normal Yeti. And now yeah. he's getting kicked out of the Seed Story Cup with Mechanical Yeti. It's obviously Power Creep, right? It's also like a pretty cool match because those guys faced in the Dreamhack Tavern Tales finals, Stanislav Sivka versus Firebat, and Stan Sivka won that one. So this was a chance for Firebat to have a revenge on Stan. But he missed it. Yeah, with this hand, Noxious, I think this game is over. Yeah, I'm not a professional Hearthstone player, but I mean, there is a chance that Brawl? Yeah, I was gonna say Brawl could actually stop. Oh, well, yeah, le uh, less and less. Look at the first hit. I mean, the armor smith did get a lot of armor, sort of. It got like two pieces of armor. It's two health. Uh, it is some health, but this uh, Arcane Missiles is seven damage for one mana. And the Heroic Strike is gonna be an extra eight. 
Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that's... I'm, I'm pretty sure that's lethal. That's absolutely lethal, yeah. so this game is over. Never it's, mind, no brawls. Firebat is getting knocked out and Stan Sivka doesn't advance, actually. He's going to face RDU. Oh, he's not done. What? The two health! Glimsh! Glimsh, the two health! Now he's got a three damage revenge, but he's still dead. But he's got a three damage revenge. He's, de he's dead to me. Wait, what if? No, no, never mind. I was gonna say low stab, but the Yeti stays up, so that doesn't matter. I'm a sad panda, and so is Firebat. This poor guy is uh, not gonna see any further of the Sea Story Cup matches. He's out of it. He's gonna be able to scout Stan Sivka from afar and cast his matches and diss him, but that's about it. Yeah. How did we miss the default actions? I mean, I was I was looking at all the, the spells, and I got just you know it's the patron effect. It's the patron syndrome. You're just looking at a board, and I know, uh, there's you, too, too many variables. We said, we said lethal because we felt like he can still attack with the Yeti, and he actually attacked with it before I... I right, thought. you called lethal. I thought he had two health, and then I rectified because I thought you were right because I missed something, but then I was right, and then Sure, we got confused. Cares. But we have Stanislav with us. Stanislav was not confused about Hi any guys. post. Okay, Stan, I have one thing to say. First of all, sportsmanship, good job. That's uh, really cool. Uh, put the mic a little closer. Sure, sure. And congratulations for making it through despite the fact that you lost after offering a rematch. Uh, he didn't make it through yet. Uh, he still needs to win for Sardiu. Yeah, he's got one more match to go yeah, through. Yeah, I need to get but now, that was one more win. Match. Yeah, so this was like, from right. now, every match is elimination for me. Exactly. So, so uh, reminds me a bit of Star Ladder, where you pulled through despite uh, all the misery you had to endure. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. You know, if you're a professional player, you have to keep on playing yeah. your A game despite the things not going your way and like that's what I'm trying to do so yeah Firebat would have loved to uh, to get that done after the Trogzor but I don't think he's getting a chance to uh, keep going through yeah. that being said uh, RDU looked really stressed out I think he really like he really wants this obviously yeah he really wants to win like he's a very competitive player yeah he's super competitive and I don't think anyone else in the world won't win so badly as he does but but how do, how do you feel about going versus RDU do you think your lineup is good I don't know, like, we both have, like, decent lineup and I think it's close, like, 50-50. So, we'll see how All it right. goes. Yeah. Do you have anything to say to RDU? Any shots, like, I'm gonna crush you, kid? Well, no, like, I'm just hoping to have a good match and, like, the better player hopefully win, like, or, like, the more, more lucky one or that, whatever. That's what but I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, that's Hearthstone shots. So, are you gonna... Oh, <laughs> so, when you... If you win... Oh, that's, that's what I'm talking about. This is what you have to do. Yeah. But if you if you win versus RDU, are you gonna offer him a banana after just to share some food? Oh God! Like we are right. actually playing a lot with each other to in order to prepare with, yeah. for the tournament. Like he's like very hardworking, so I wouldn't mind losing to him because I know he is putting a lot of effort to into the game. But so do I. So I'm like, looking forward for a great match. And all right. So you keep your bananas to yourself. Like I'm probably gonna eat all, all of them. So okay. Politicians <laughs> answer. And not talking about bananas, but let's talk about this other topic. I very much respect RDU. Um, all right, so bananas shall not be shared. Yeah. We know that much, but good luck nonetheless. Okay, thank you guys. I hope See you. Uh, I hope you do well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, good luck, man. Nice one. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching this match. We're moving on to the next one. RDU versus Stan Sivka. So he's not quite out of it yet, but he, he really pulled through, um, and he's going to be able to get himself another chance at winning after all that happened. Uh, he might. I mean, if he pulls through, that's going to be an insane story to tell. Absolutely. I love his decks. I like uh, yeah. the mage a lot with the portals and the spell slinger. The trunks was super fun right. to watch. Casino mage, right? Yeah, yeah. Casino mage is great. And great to watch. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's that great to play, but I like the deck. It's even more RNG because he put Ida's Dark Bane in. He's just like. Like, yeah, why not? Let's just like slap another one of those. At some point, it doesn't matter, right? Like, right. At some point, you just the threshold of RNG is like, like one, one, one out of a million or one out of two million. Like you don't really in the Hearthstone game, you don't really see the difference. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we'll be back, guys. We'll take a five minutes break, and uh, right after this, we'll be continuing on. So stay tuned.